do have three options to build and continue to build this offensive line. The first one being internally. The second one being through the draft. We have 10 draft picks, three in the first round. And we have a guy named Howie Roseman who loves, as he should, as he should, who loves to draft offensive line. And then lastly, free agency. Because we did add $12 million in free agency money from Brandon Brooks retirement and restructuring. So right now we have about $24 million spent in free agency. So with this video, we're gonna be talking about our three avenues to building um, and continue to build this offensive line because we're building around Jalen Hurts, then that starts with the offensive line. Yeah, yeah. What's poppin'? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great episode of Simone with the Spizzords. I'm Simone, bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're old here, you haven't already, subscribe to Jenny and make sure you stop what you're doing. Leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official Simone with the Spizzords, a merch collection, get you the classic tea, the wavy tea. Or the Jalen Make It Hurts tea. And the last link, guys. Well, the last thing I need y'all to do is turn your notification bells on. Because you know the videos are coming like boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. And we will be going live this Saturday for one of the championship games. So make sure you have your notification bells on this Sunday. So you don't miss that live stream. But guys, <laughs> we got some shit to get into. You know what I'm saying? Another one of our off-season tasks. You guys know the off-season is like really busy even though it's not games going on every sunday it's really busy because it's really big transaction time and decision making time you know game time is when all the you already figured out because of the off season but guys we already know brandon brooks brooks you know i love i'm always brandon brooks like brs is always a lot for me i don't know why it is but brandon brooks just retired. I mean, the heartfelt speech, the way he restructured his contract, giving right back to the birds so we won't have as much dead money. I mean, it's nothing but a salute and respect for the brother. Three-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, Brandon Brooks. Appreciate everything you did for Philly, my guy. But it does leave us, and actually, it doesn't leave us with that many questions. Um, I hate it. Like, you know, everything has its pros and cons. Brandon Brooks was hurt for so long. He spent 2020 hurt. He came back for like one or two games this season and then was hurt for the rest of the season. So that was a big con, but it also gave us a lot of time to develop our internal talent. So it's not like Brandon Brooks is retiring and he's been starting for us for the last two years. We already had to have the next man up mentality on the offensive line because he has been hurt for so long. So we're not just left completely spinning and turning where we're going to go from here because we do already have some internal a lot of internal options that have already been developing because Brandon Brooks has been gone so long I think that's why his retirement isn't going to really hit that hard because we've already been without him for basically two whole seasons so it's kind of like yeah we knew it was coming but guys we know how important this offensive line is to the team to building around Jalen Hurts it all starts on the offensive line so we have to figure out what we're going to do going into next season. Now, we do have three options to build and continue to build this offensive line. The first one being internally. The second one being through the draft. We have 10 draft picks, three in the first round. And we have a guy named Howie Roseman who loves, as he should, as he should, who loves to draft offensive linemen. I've never been mad at Howie taking the O-line. I know when we first got Landon Dickerson last season, I was like, mm, but he's been hurt, boom, 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 boom. But I did come around and say, you know, you can't be mad that we continue to build in the trenches. And Landon Dickerson has been doing great for us. And then lastly, free agency, because we did add $12 million in free agency money from Brandon Brooks retirement and restructuring. So right now we have about $24 million spent in free agency. So with this video, we're going to be talking about our three avenues to building um, and continue to build this offensive line because we're building around Jalen Hurts, then that starts with the offensive line. So like I said, internally through the draft and free agents. So let's start with internally. So right now, we know Brandon Brooks, when he was playing, there's no shade to Brandon Brooks at all, but when he was playing, he was playing at right guard and that's where he really dominated top five, top three office alignment in the league, top five, top three guard, period. <laughs> Top three, he wasn't three. 
So Landon Dickerson has been really excelling right now at the left guard position. So it seems like we're going to be moving um, Isaac Samala to the right guard position automatically, uh, which is kind of like a plug and play move. Now, Isaac is someone who continues to battle in injuries as well. So that's something that we have to look out for. We're going to, have, we're going to need depth on the O-line because we know Isaac is someone who um, battles injuries a lot, just like um, Brandon Brooks has. So we have that immediately, but then we also have the big question mark of Jason Kelsey at center because it's kind of like, um, you guys know every offseason, Jason Kelsey is flirting with retirement. Pretty much every offseason, Jason Kelsey is talking about he might retire. Is he going to retire? Boom, 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 boom. So in the event that Jason Kelsey retires, and when I'm saying, when we're talking about this bill, we're not even talking about just for this season. This is for next season, next season, next season. We know Jason Kelsey is um, up there in age and he can retire at any given moment. So we do have to continue to build around that center position as well. So in the event that Jason Kelsey does retire or starts taking less snaps, we can see Isaac instantly moving over. Not instantly, but with what we have right now, Isaac will be the one to move over to center, which will have us having questions at right guard, of course. So immediately at right guard, uh, we can see a lot of guys competing for right guard. We got Nate Urbig, we got Jack Anderson, we got Jack Driscoll. Jack, Jack Driscoll is another guy who battles with injuries as well as Isaac does. And of course, that's why we have to continue to build this depth. So we can see um, Nate, Jack Anderson, Jack Driscoll, and also um, Oshika. Now, Oshika, he balled out in the, I mean, however you want to define balled out, but he had a very good showing that Nick Sirianni and um, um, Stoutland was going on about how well Oshika played and also how well Jack Anderson played in week 18 against the, um, the Dallas Cowboys. So those guys are two guards of our future. Um, they played good in week 18, and those are guys that we have for depth. But at the same time, we have a lot of young people. We have a lot of older guys on the line, yes, but we do have a lot of young pieces on this line that we have to still see what they're going to be. Like I said, Oshika showed a lot of potential. Anderson shows showed a lot of potential. Um, Nate keeps showing a lot of potential. Driscoll keeps showing a lot of potential. But as of right now, it's still very much potential, and I hope that potential can turn into greatness. But we still don't know what we have um, week every week, and we don't know what we will get from them consistently. And that's why we might need to make – well, we will have to make some moves in the draft. Like, that doesn't necessarily mean first round, but we know every draft we draft offensive linemen, and that's just a smart way to do it, and that's why we have so many potentials in our um, depth chart because of how we continuously to build in the trenches. And then we got Jeff Stoutland, the GOAT of the Office of Live coaches, coaching these guys up. So we see we already explained what we have internally. We have a lot of battles that can happen at the right guard position. Um, Isaac, if everything stayed right now, Isaac, I feel like would play right guard um, just because of how well Landon Dickerson has been thriving at left guard. And then, of course, Jason Kelsey at center. Um, and then down the line, of course, Jason Kelsey is the biggest one that we have to, uh, the next big guy we're have to replace after Brandon Brooks. But guys, next up, let's look at the draft. Now, of course, we have a lot of late round options for offensive linemen, um, second round, third round, so on. But in the event that we do spend one of our first round picks on an offensive lineman and an interior offensive lineman at that, we have to look at some options. Now, we have three first round picks and I won't be mad at all if we pick an offensive lineman. And I won't be surprised because, like I said, like we all know, how he loves to draft offensive linemen and has been for our the better of the team because we've, <laughs> we've needed them guys, okay? So let's talk about one of the best interior offensive linemen coming out of the draft this season, and his name is Tyler Linderbaum. Now, Tyler Linderbaum is coming out of Iowa State, and we have the number 15 overall pick. Um, when I'm looking in the, he can go, we know mock drafts are accurate. Like they don't dictate exactly what's going to happen. But Tyler Linderbaum is definitely, absolutely a top 20 pick. And a lot of people have him as a top 15 pick. And a lot of people have him going before 15. Now there are a lot of teams I feel like that are going to be picking tackles and not necessarily interior offensive linemen in the draft. Um, so I do think he'll fall to maybe 10. 
Um, and it would be great if he falls to 15. Now, we know how aggressive we are when it comes to linemen. So I wouldn't even be surprised if the Eagles traded up for this guy, Tyler Linderbaum. And not only would I not be surprised, I wouldn't be mad because this guy they're saying is going to be instant impact. Now, like I said, he might fall to 15. It won't be surprising if he falls to 15, but it won't be surprising at all if he goes top 10 or goes before um, 15. So it's kind of like a... Uh, it could happen, he could fall, but there is a scenario where the Eagles don't get him at all, but there is a scenario where the Eagles have to trade up for him. But guys, let's talk about Tyler Linderbaum because this guy has really been taking over um, when it comes, because this, this draft is a very defensive heavy draft, but it's also a very offensive line heavy draft. There's a lot of tackles that's going to be expected to go top 20, and this guy interior offensive alignment is expected to go top 20 as well. So it's defensive heavy, but then it's very top heavy when it comes to Lineman. So when his scouting report wise, his positives are he's a very good initial. He has very good initial quickness, contact balance, and body control to consistently stay attached to blocks. He has elite grip strength, leg drive, and hip mobility to clamp, explode, re-leverage, and maintain control in the run game. Masterfully negotiates combo blocks with a keen understanding of how and when to fit, release, and overtake to prevent penetration. Creates displacement and pick off backers. He applies consistent pressure on defenders. That's what I love to hear, consistent. You hear all the words elite, consistent. It's the consistency for me. Applies consistent pressure on defenders through the whistle that breaks down their balance and racks up knockdowns. Plays with good patience and a firm posture and protection to keep his head out of blocks, strike, and reset to mirror rushers. Looks for work when uncovered with thump and power to collapse adjacent rushers now they're saying that this guy so in 2021 he had 12 starts at center they're saying that this guy is an immediate starter an immediate nfl starter and that's what we need y'all when we're looking at draft picks these three first round picks all of these guys need to be immediate starters when we're looking we have three top 20 picks in the first round all of these guys need to be immediate starters i don't care what we're i know i want all defense but whatever the heck we pick, it, it needs to be an immediate starter. They're saying this guy is an immediate starter. If we go freaking all wide receiver, if all them guys are immediate starters, boom. If we go three, I don't care. Basically, I'm saying no matter what we get, if Howie walks away with this draft with three starters, I'm good. All I need to know is that these guys that we're picking are all going to be starting week one. That's the goal with first round picks, okay? start first round picks especially top 20 three top 20 picks all these guys need to be ready to go week one okay so um y'all this dude don't even have any what's the negatives okay negatives can get a little overzealous at the second level and overrun his target to open up the back door overly reliant on two hand strikes and protection that strict that shrinks his margin for error, needs to vary his strikes and include more independent hands to keep rushers guessing. Marginal weight and girth causes him to be tardy to anchor when bigger rushers knock down his hands, get into his frame and bull rush. Vulnerable to get a knocked back off his levels with guards and picked off when defensive tackles spike and slant inside. So these are the this is the overall for him. So he was named the 2021 Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year. He had 33 career starts at center. Linderbaum is a former three-star offensive lineman and defensive lineman recruit who originally committed to Iowa as a defensive tackle before making the switch early in his career to offensive lineman. So that just goes to show the versatility of this guy. Linderbaum has 33 career starts at center since 2019 inside the Hawkeyes zone run scheme. He's a bit undersized in terms of weight and girth, but he plays with an advanced understanding of how to leverage blocks with exceptional quickness, explosive power, and grip strength to control defenders in the run game. Linderbaum does a tremendous job of getting under and inside the pads of defensive linemen on combo blocks to create displacement while knowing exactly when to overtake or release to the second level. Overall, he's a dynamic run blocker inside a zone heavy scheme with the ability to be devastating at the second level. His size and anchoring concerns can lead to issues against high-end power rushers in the NFL if he doesn't improve his use of hands to keep rushers guessing. But he is a quick processor who can protect his edges against shifty rushers. 
So this guy sounds great to me. Like I said, they said he worked very well in a run heavy scheme and we know what we're trying to get right now is continuing to get the run going. So Linderbaum, y'all, like I said, this guy is supposed to be a day one starter in the NFL. So if we get him, that will be amazing. Now, the only question is, um, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, like, like I said, he had 33 career starts in this past season. He had 12 starts at center. Um, obviously, Jason Kelsey is here right now. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Y'all let me know how he would look maybe coming in at right guard. Like I said, I don't know. Y'all the experts, not me in the comments. So let me know because obviously I don't now if Jason Kelsey was retiring this year and boom we got this guy Leonard Brown perfect. But if Jason Kelsey is still on the roster this season, that's a little awkward, you know what I mean? Cause how they gonna work? Y'all let me know how that's how that would line up. But like I said, I would not be mad if Howie Roseman goes and gets this guy, Linderbaum. Um, because like I said, this draft is defensive heavy. But, y'all, in the first round, it's a lot of offensive of line starter gyms, NFL starter ready gyms coming out of the offensive of line. Um, but then, y'all, we have a third option right now. And the third option, like I said, is to build um, through free agency. So, through free agency, um, we have, we're going to have $24 million to spend right now. And that can grow just depending if other guys restructure their contracts as well. So let's talk about some guys that we could get out of um, the draft. I mean, the, through free agency. And one guy I was going to talk about is James Daniels, um, current Chicago Bear right guard who has been thriving this season. So Pro Football Focus has him as one of the top 50 um, NFL free agents right now. And it could be a reach because, uh, like I said, he's top 50. And he's going to want um, that bread. We're going to talk about it. But then also at the same time, He's playing on the Chicago Bears who are bad. <laughs> and maybe he'll see the potential that the Eagles have. And especially coming in, playing on a, a, a historically great offensive line. And then also, you know, Jeff Stoutland is a big seller as well. Who wouldn't want to be playing under Jeff Stoutland? But let's talk about James da Daniels. So Pro Football Focus says Daniels is quietly in the midst of his best NFL season with the Bears putting him at one position, right guard, and leaving that, him there to improve over the year. Because the Bears pretty much had him moving all over the line, but once they put him at right guard, he really popped off and thrived. Dales was one of the youngest draft picks in 2018 and will be just 24 years old in week one of 2022. The combination of youth and the fact that Daniels kept getting moved around the interior of the offensive line suggests he could have more untapped potential as a full-time right guard. From week four to week 18, Daniels' 78.5 overall grade ranked ninth among guards, his 80 pass blocking grade ranked sixth, and his 78.7 run blocking grade ranked 11th. His strengths is his age, his zone blocking, and his pass blocking. His weakness is gap runs and facing um, power. His best scheme fit would be a starting guard in a zone blocking scheme. He has played predominantly in zone heavy attacks between college at Iowa and his four years with the Bears, and that's where he excels when it comes to the run game. So this guy is out of Iowa, just like our guy Linderbaum in the draft. So injury history rise. He played in every game in 2018 and 2019. He did um, only play, he only played, let me do quick math, 11 games in 2020 because he was hurt, but he was healthy all 2021. They're projecting him to have a five-year deal worth $10 million a year. So Dale's expected to get a bag. But again, like I said, this guy can be a guy for the long term, the future, because our offensive line, we're trying to turn over into a younger core. And this guy, Daniels, is only going to be 24 years old starting in 2022 because he was extremely young coming out of the draft. So he's a young, long-term option. So that's a way we can get a young, long-term option. This guy, Daniels, like I said, he played all over the Bears' offensive line. So he showed his versatility. Um, and you know, the offensive linemen, especially for us, they have to show versatility because it's a next man up line. It's a next man up trenches. But once they place him at right guard, where we have our biggest question mark at, he exploded and he thrived at right guard. So just imagine 
him under Jeff Stoutland. Now, he is expected to get a heavy bag dropped on him. But like I said, we got the money to spend and we got to invest in the offensive line. So do y'all see a scenario where we drop um, a bag on an offensive lineman and free agency? Because it's a lot of offensive linemen, great offensive linemen coming up now in this free agency class. Um, again, he's out of Iowa, just like our guy Linderbaum. Linderbaum, like I said, hopefully he falls um, to us at 15. We know we have 15 and 16. So if he falls, boom, we get Linderbaum at 15. Boom, at 16, we get our linebacker or our cornerback, um, just depending who's there. But, y'all, this draft has me super excited. This offseason has me super excited because there's so many options that the birds can do between $24 million in free agency and three first-round picks. It's nothing not to get excited about. But guys, let me know what you think. Let me know down below. Make sure you like this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Keep rocking with me. Um, turn your notification bells on as well. And until I talk to you guys next time. Bye.